she comes to Jesus, all the disciples are mad at her. Why is this woman doing what she's doing? What is her problem? But might I say, it was because they may have not experienced what this woman had experienced. Because you remember, these disciples were ex-fishermen. They were ex-tax collectors. The difference between this woman was she didn't come from a history of being a fisherman. She didn't come from a history of being a tax collector. The Bible just says that her sins were many. Please follow me with this. Her sins were many. Some people believe that this woman was a prostitute. That her lifestyle was obvious to be seen by the multitude of people. And they condemned her because she had a lifestyle that was perverted. Please follow me. A lifestyle of perversion. Something treacherous. Something bad. Something that possibly she knew if she didn't get a hold of. Possibly it could have taken her life. A way of life. A lifestyle that she had been involved in. And this is the reason why she comes inside of the house. And she comes to Jesus. And she takes this ointment or this, I would say, this perfume. Let me just bring it into upper terms. She takes the perfume and she breaks it and she opens it. I believe the reason why she breaks the ointment and she pours it upon Jesus was because the ointment possibly could have been a symbol of the lifestyle that she had been in. Because if she had been a prostitute, one of the main things that she may have been acquainted with was making sure that she smelled good for the people that she would invite in her house. The very thing that she would use in the world, the thing that she used in the kingdom of darkness was the very same thing that she used to bless Jesus with. I believe because something had happened inside of this woman that the disciples could not experience. They had no revelation and they had no, they had no mind of understanding why she was so grateful of what had been done inside of her. They begin to complain and say that this ointment could have been used for feeding the poor. And Jesus rebukes them. And Jesus tells them that the poor you'll have always. But this moment. This moment that this woman is embracing is priceless. This experience, this testimony of what took place inwardly is a great moment to the point where she is so grateful of what happens that her value system changes. And this is what begins to happen when you have a true encounter with Jesus. There's a different value system. I don't care what you was doing. I don't care if you was a, a NBA basketball player. I don't care if you was a rapper, if you sold millions of records. I don't care if you was a thug, if you was a pimp. I don't care if you was a stripper. Trust me, if you have a real experience with Jesus, I guarantee that your value system shifts. And then you will begin to recognize what is the most valuable thing. So again, in one side of her life, the ointment may have been used and it may have been valuable to her before. But after Jesus steps in her life, she transitions what is important and significant and she identifies the greatest thing that I can ever be a part of and encounter is Jesus. This woman was grateful, I believe, because she had a lifestyle of perversion. The disciples didn't understand this because they didn't have the same issue as this woman. Again, they were fishermen. Tax 
tax collectors. But this woman, the Bible said, had many sins. She then understands something that is the greatest thing that we can see. The greatest experience that she could ever encounter was what she endured after Jesus had healed the sick, after Jesus has raised the dead, after Jesus had healed the man with the withered hand, after Jesus had restored the sight of the blind, might I say that that wasn't the greatest thing that he did. The greatest thing that Jesus could ever do in a person's life is deliver them from them. She was not like the woman with the issue of blood. She did not have a physical illness. She did not have any type of illness of those of those natures. She had nothing wrong with her except herself. Jesus then tells the disciples, don't rebuke this lady because what she is doing will have to be remembered whenever the gospel is preached. And that is that Jesus can deliver us from ourselves. That he can deliver us from the greatest form of fashion of sin. That he can deliver us from the greatest treachery that this world could ever throw up against us. He can deliver several things that I want to point out in this scripture. Again, it is interesting. At the darkest moment of what Jesus is going to experience, outwardly, there was darkness around the house. But inside the house was a great worship experience. And I believe this is how he works, y'all. Sometimes, there are things that are brewed outwardly that seem as if it is extremely devastating and that it will kill us and that it will sabotage us. But I believe that at these great marks in our lives, it's the opportunity for us to come into a real encounter with Christ. Verse 8. It says that she had done what she could. She done what she could. And this is what happens when a person comes to Christ. You will begin to understand that there is something that you can do. If you really have an encounter with Jesus, you'll recognize that it is something that, that you can do. It is, it is something that is awakened inside of you that you feel as if that you have to offer to humanity to get the message across to what he's done in your life. This woman done what she could do. When the, when the power of God really illuminates within you, he will enable you to do something. We shouldn't have to continue to encourage people to do things for the Lord. If he really works inside of you, we don't, have to, we don't have to continue to remind you. We don't have to stay on you to do anything for the Lord. But it will be something burdened inside of the heart that illuminates something that it is for you to do. And this woman done what she could. The next thing that she does, watch what it says in verse 8. She came, she has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Two things that are significant in this passage of scripture. She comes to anoint his body aforehand. Somebody say aforehand. Can I tell you what that means? That means before. <laughs> uh, because what begins to happen when you come into a worship experience with the Lord, he prepares you for something that is going to happen. He gets you prepared for something that is going to happen. He gives you a glimpse of something that shall be and puts you in a situation that doesn't look like the thing that he said would happen. 
But he assures you that I'm putting you in a place to be prepared for something to come. This woman anoints him because she understands that something is going to happen. And this is what happens in the presence of God. When you dwell in his presence, he begins to speak to you. He begins to anoint a call upon your life. And if you continue to dwell in his presence, he then will show you glimpses of things to come. And then he will put you in a 